Good afternoon, champions, and welcome to the very first Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realm stream. Uh, my name is Dylan Wilkes, and I am your host, and there's a guest I will be introducing uh, shortly. Uh, now, before I begin, I would like to state that this is the first ever stream that we have done from the Codename Entertainment Studio. Uh, so I'd like to apologize in advance for the mistakes we will inevitably make. And uh, yes, we're just, we're learning while we're doing this. Uh, this studio was built uh, last week very quickly by some very talented people we have in the office, all of whom are named Dave. Really, it's just it's just one guy. Um, so yeah, this is a bit of an experiment for us and uh, one that we anticipate will evolve and change quite a bit over the course of its lifetime and uh, as we learn the where's, why's, and who's and such of uh, Twitch streaming. Um, so we would love to get your feedback, um, provided your feedback isn't just you guys suck because um, that's not super helpful for us, but um, anything constructive, awesome. Uh, we will take it to heart because we want to learn. Uh, so. First things first, um, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Wizards of the Coast. Um, Dungeons and Dragons is a, uh, it's a very important part of our lives and we feel honored and blessed to be able to share that passion with the Dungeons and Dragons audience here on Twitch, um, as well as through the, a game called Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Um, this is just, uh, it's, you know, it's a bit of a dream come true for us, I think. And um, yes, uh, so for today's show, uh, we have a wonderful and informative guest who uh, knows pretty much everything about all things D&D and Codename Entertainment. Um, although we are game designers, not uh, lore masters, so uh, just keep that in mind uh, when, we, uh, when we get to answering some questions. Um, so I think the f without further ado, I should uh, introduce my guest. This is uh, Eric Jordan. He is the CEO of Codename Entertainment. Um, he is an avid gamer. He is a longtime dungeon master and has been playing <laughs> D and D for a while. A long time. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. A, while. a long time. Um, Since before you were born, young man. Uh, that seems very <laughs> likely. Yeah, um, it's a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a spring chicken. Um, uh, for those who are wondering about the. Uh, the uh, Idol Champions game we have running in the background. This is actually my personal account, um, and so feel free to criticize my Your formation. My, my formation. Like, um, what are you doing? Yeah, you know what? I haven't done all of the new adventures yet. The ones that came out yesterday. They came so, out like last night. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, haven't quite gotten to it yet. So that's kind of what's going on here is the very first oh, one I man, loaded up. Someone's got 500 hours in the game. Holy crap. How, no. When? <laughs> Swearing. <laughs> well, I guess that's okay. PG-13. Yeah, we're yeah. Good. We're good. I said okay. crap. I said crap. That's oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're all yeah. good. All good. Yeah. We're, we're aiming for a PG-13 stream, but if we delve outside that, it happens. Um, yes, I am running a, a formation without wow, Minsk, Minsk and Boo. I know. The, the changed meta. Yeah. You know what? And it's, it's only because Hitch's friendly affects him, so I can just get his damage a little bit higher. But, uh, Are you using Jamila as your main? Then, no, or? no, uh, Hitch. Oh, the Hitch, Hitch, and then your yes. oh, and your second. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. And you like Stokey. You're like a big Stokey fan, right? Uh, that into debuff. dots and all that good stuff. Well, also, I was I was much luckier with my Stokey chests than with anything else. So she's got all the damage increase epics um, because this is my personal account. We didn't God mode this account and give me a million chests so that I'd have everything. It's like. This is the one this that I've the, been the Dylan chipping away at. Legit account. Yeah, yeah, more yeah. or less. Um, there we go. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's a very good point. Chat. There we go. No, and they're very correct about uh, the flaws in my formation. I uh, haven't looked at this since this morning, but I have some gold to spend. Well, you can bring it up. Yeah, I can. Through um, the magic of technology, we can like play <laughs> while we talk. Yeah, I think I'm only around 300 hours, maybe. Uh, oh yeah. Not yeah. a not a huge number. I'm I'm a I'm a newbie. Uh, uh, one other thing I would like to mention before we get rolling is that we will be doing a few giveaways. Um, we have a handful of gold chests to give away. I think it's two. We're going to do one every 15 minutes-ish, um, as well as a key for uh, Tales from Candledeep Tomb of Annihilation, uh, which came out yesterday on Steam. And uh, there are some awesome people over at BCom that put that together. And they're Canadian to studio. Be... Shout outs to Can well, we're a Canadian studio, so yeah. I'm very proud of that. And BCom's yeah, yeah. another Canadian I think studio. They're in, I think they're in Quebec City. Um, yeah. Well, actually, my Canada ends at sort of the Rockies, but 
<laughs> wow. Okay. BC. <laughs> so so well, as long as you're from BC. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. But pretty... special shout out to other, any studio that's making video games and D and D has got to be like a honorary Canadian studio. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's Absolutely. and it's you know it's it's just awesome to have back shout outs. Yeah, more back. more cool people who are who are making cool games and uh, we're cool very D and D games and we're very lucky oh, to be yes. giving giving a key for one away. Um, we're pretty stoked about that. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, it'll be one of those things to. Uh, in case you're wondering in chat, how do you do it? I think somebody might already be talking about it, but the window's going by way too quickly for me. Um, we will try to roughly announce the uh, the, the giveaways around 15 minutes-ish, so quarter after uh, the hour, and uh, and then half past, and then quarter two. And uh, yeah, you just type in exclamation raffle, all one word, uh, into the chat to enter once it starts. Do so, you have to enter more than once, or once you've entered, are you entered for all? That's three a great draws? question. Um, you enter in once each time because it, it oh, clears each time the list. Oh, it clears the list. Okay. Yeah, and um, you go. can only enter in once each time as well. Uh, and so the oh, look, people are entering already. Yeah, waffles, yeah. waffles. Not yet. Yeah, no, not, no, yet. No, not yet. No, no, we're not, we're <laughs> but not the uh, yet, the yet, official yet, code name entertainment uh, uh, Twitch moderator will be will be doing that. Yeah. yeah shout out to Erica, who's there uh, in chat on a seven second delay in the other room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of you may recognize her from uh, every Crusaders of the Lost Idols Q&A ever, probably. On Reddit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she does all the, well, not, well, I guess we have guests. We have guests that come in. Oh, you know? right, yes. Yeah, art guests and oh, yeah, Justin design mm -hmm. guests and other guests. I even I even did one Reddit. Guest. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. How'd that go? Uh, well, I, um, did you get reddited? So, well, I like I'm the CEO, not like the designer, um, and so I got you know the preamble said that like Eric's the CEO, so asking like detailed math questions, Eric won't be able to answer. Um, and so I got so many questions that I couldn't answer that what I started to do was just to pretend that they asked me a different question that I could answer that I thought was interesting. And so I just started answering. <laughs> you basically others. just started just, talking about whatever you want. I was just like, I'll just answer this question because I think this is an interesting question. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. New adventure unlocked. So I actually haven't played. Um, oh my gosh, Lee! The free content, the new content yet on this account, which so is free. The free new content. All the free That's new true. content from yesterday's update. Yeah. Um, that went out without any hitches. No. Hitch. Oh well. Oh, anyways. that was bad. <laughs> oh man. Um, so I don't know. What do you think, Chat? Should I do another Terror in the Dark, or should I start Unearthed Evil? Um, I'll wait a few seconds for your feedback because I know there's a bit of a delay, but. Uh, yeah, it'll be fun to check okay, out. You're going to have to make that chat window bigger or we're never going to see anything about <laughs> things going on in there. It's moving it's way true. too fast. It's true. Um, so uh, to Dave, who did, uh, as Dylan mentioned, uh, put a lot of time in over uh, weekends and stuff. Behind us is, a, is, as you can imagine, not actually the game. Ooh, yeah. but uh, a green... Unearthed evil it is. A green screen. Overwhelming consensus, looks like. There we go. Um, and so, yeah, Dave was in on weekends, painting. Um, him and Allison came in and did stuff, and Dave's been figuring out how to do all this and ordering gear and all those good things. Um, but uh, we only have one monitor in here, so what we're looking at is very squished of all sorts of different things. Yeah, if you could imagine needing three monitors for your setup and using one 1080p monitor, that's what we're doing. Um, it's not my favorite setup. Uh, I'm just noticing that the game is inviting me to join us now on the D&D Twitch stream, which sounds like a paradox if I hit that, that button. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. It's like Inception. Yeah. Uh, let's see, oh, we have some uh, Marble California Freelancer here. We love your game here at our offices. Well, Awesome, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say, you know, like one of the things I love about DMing is creating these experiences that like people can find really engaging and really exciting. Yes. And one of the things I love about both running a company and especially running a video game company is in those instances you're kind of either doing it sort of at the corporate level or yeah. sort of in your role as CEO. Um, but like it is such a kind of honor, privilege, weight of responsibility to kind of do that for a whole community of people who are really, Someone really Someone from Hungary it. is in chat. That's oh, amazing. there we go. Shout out yeah. to Hungary. Gosh, what time is it in Hungary? It must be nine, uh, ten nine hours, hours ahead. ahead? So it's late at night. Late at night. Night owl. There we go. I imagine the internet has no time, so. That's that's fair. Yeah, the um, board game, Tales from Candlekeep. Yes, that's right. I was actually, 
uh, working, uh, playing it yesterday <laughs> to yeah. sort of check it out because I um, had a chance to see uh, a couple of demos of it during its uh, process through uh, through the Beacon guys and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, but it was great to actually be able to download it and uh, and check it out and play it. Cool. So, Somebody um, was just asking if I've purchased any chests, and yes, I did purchase a few at the start because I wanted I wanted Bruner's axe, and then I got, I grabbed the DLCs, and then the yeah, uh, as we go forward through my account and you see the later characters, my uh, Arkan and Jamila and Hitch and a few others are, are not well geared. I was very lucky with the first ones, um, just in case okay. you're wondering. Uh, old old timer D and D fan. Yes, I first started, edition. Ooh, that's right. Yeah, those oh, books yeah. were red, weren't they? Those yeah, they were like the old red ones. No, no. That, was that second edition? <laughs> well, the red Crap. box, right? So there was basic. But at least, like, so I was 12 when all that stuff was coming out, and no 12-year-old wants to play anything that says basic mm -hmm. in the title, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, theoretically, that's what, you know, probably would have made sense for us to play. Yeah. But everyone wanted to play Advanced D&D &D or AD&D, &D, and so, like, it, you know, you, you would and you would ask people in the playground kind of disparagingly, like, what version do you play? And if they said <laughs> basic, you're like... I play A D and D, so like, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, it's totally true. Yeah. So yeah, and then I mean before that, right? Because that was the first set that came out. But then there's the you know the original uh, sort of trilogy of books that like the white box and stuff like that that came mm. out. Um, mm -hmm. So I actually have Eric. Oh, someone, Erica, tell someone to bring in my OCS box because I bought. You know, the best Christmas presents come from yourself. So I was shopping for Christmas last year and I picked up this, uh, the white box, original collector set, um, seventh edition printing of that. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was really cool. And then I got really sick after Christmas and spent my Christmas spent holidays in bed. It? No, reading. Well, I read oh, it from cover to cover. So, oh, wow. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So I, I am, oh. I'm sure we have some questions coming. Oh, question. In. Look at that. Hashtag yeah, yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Do you expect? Oh, so I brought it. Look, there we go. Oh. Wow, I speak and it happens. Thank you. Um, now, yeah. where do I? I think uh, it's this camera. It's this camera, but I can't yeah. see the, that feed, so I'm not quite sure. I'll just hold it up. Oh, yeah, long enough. Oh, and then yeah. went away. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, yeah. there and we be go. Be careful, you don't cut off your arm if you go too far that way, because Whoa. green screen camera size. You know, it's one yeah, of those things. Yeah, all the craziness. Anyways, yes, I was so thrilled to get this actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're going to be doing our first giveaway in a few minutes here. Um, probably going to aim for about 1.15 p.m. Pacific. Um, so if you could do that conversion in your head, because I have no idea where everybody is. I think they're around the world. Um, so maybe we should start taking some so, questions, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like questions. They're going by really there. quickly, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So how's that going? So uh, let's go with this one. Uh, are you guys going to address heroes not attacking or using ultimates when enemy bosses are very low on health? Um... How are we going to address it? Uh, well, uh, maybe. There we go. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of insight uh, they were hoping for, I'm sure. <laughs> I know. They're like seen behind the curtain here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Justin? Anyways. Uh, uh, yeah, so Justin is the lead. Justin Stocks, who's one of the co-founders of the company, is the lead designer in the game. And so mm -hmm. a lot of lovely design choices like that Justin gets to uh, to make and balance. It was, like, it was Justin's uh, changes to all the ultimates, which as a player, I really, really enjoyed oh, having yeah. the ultimates all change because then I could feel really excited about... Uh, it was way better than having one good one and a bunch of bunch less of, good ones. I know. Well, I, mm -hmm. ooh, it was unfortunate because it was less good ones, but really cool animations. <laughs> So yeah. you'd have this like awesome fire animation yeah. coming down from the sky, but then it would do nothing. So, so the raffle yeah. is open. Okay. Raffle's open. There we go. Yeah. Um, so this is a question from Coast Sailing. Uh, so excited to explore other parts of the Sword Coast. Will this game create new content or present only familiar areas that have been covered before? Ah, well. Let's see. I'm not saying anything necessarily. But uh, which isn't, I guess, you know, is part of Forgotten Realms. But mm -hmm. um, Cholt being in a different area, I guess, it's really not giving away too much because we actually say on the Steam Store page that we will come out with Tomb of Annihilation content. So, um, so yeah, so definitely uh, one of the things that was cool about working with uh, Wizards of the Coast and uh, particularly the Forgotten Realms setting is there's just so many different areas you can go and explore. Yeah. And, um, because one of the things that we're really into as a company is keeping the game fresh and alive through lots of new content coming out. Uh -huh. um, having that world to draw from is really awesome. So yes, you can expect to see lots and lots of different interesting, cool, and exciting things in terms of content. Excellent. 
So let's look at some other, what other questions do we have? What's, what's catching your eye right now, Eric? Oh, what's catching my eyes are titles. You're, you say host, and I say CEO Codename Entertainment. My title seems so much larger than your title. It should be like host. Well, it is a little more important than mine. Oh, well. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, yes, other questions. There we go. Uh, a better tier three global blessing change, less distracted to 2x faster mobs spawning for the same there pricing. There we go. Um, that's a suggestion more than mm -hmm. a question. And, yes. Um, and I haven't, you know, I because that stuff came out. And yeah. then if people were live when that was coming out, there was a few minor bumps that all got ironed out. And Did so they all get booted from the game or something? Um, there was a minor issue that if you reset, um, you might get a black screen instead of the map to choose your next adventure. And oh. then if you turned off the game and restarted, that map uh, hopefully would replace, but there's a small portion of players who wasn't. So we had to get that fixed. So I actually spent much of yesterday evening both, you know, somewhat involved in that, and then I'm giving a keynote talk in a couple of weeks in Australia, and so I was then Australia. working on my keynote <laughs> last night. Oh, wow. Um, we have a question here that's, mm -hmm. oh, maybe that's not for us, question for at D&D. Uh, will we get in-game ability unlocks by level table? Um, I have to check wiki every time, and in-game table would really help. Um, so I guess when they're leveling their character, yes. having a better idea of what's coming up and I and, totally uh, agree with that, and that has been that was a feedback I had my for myself because I'd be like, oh, what's happening, and I want to kind of know, especially because you can see the next one, but maybe the next one isn't one you're really excited about because you want mm -hmm. sort of a formation one that's like one or two after, but you can't quite remember. Yeah. Um. So yes, I would. There's lots of stuff I would love to see, and so I also would love to see that, and so I suspect it will happen at some point. But there's just so many things to do in the game. They're also wondering if uh, if this is the fifth edition version of the Forgotten Realms. It is the fifth edition Forgotten uh, fifth edition version of Forgotten Realms. Yeah, so we're within the kind of five E world. Uh -huh. uh, somebody's asking how I have so much gold find because um, they have clearly more hours than me. Um, I didn't spend very much of my currency post event yet um right the tier two and uh, yeah. such i just uh, bought a little bit of the dps one because i'm like i know dps is always good so i'll just do a little yeah. bit there but yeah. then i'm like i need to think i simply so. just i haven't spent much yet um you know if, if i go into the blessings menu it's like tier one sure tier two eh. now you spent more than i have yeah but i just didn't want to i didn't want to dump it all um because then my gold find would suck and uh, yeah, I just want to get it up a little bit higher before I start spending more of it, just because it's uh, allow me to farm a little faster for the short term. Um, let's see what else we have. Mm -hmm. uh, are you guys planning any improvements to the way you handle ending season events? At the end of Harvest, I was in a run, and the only way you get notices is if you exit the game or restart your run. Uh, so when the season ended, all my pumpkins and rip, I didn't get a last chance to finish achievements I wanted, uh, because the only way I found out that I couldn't run another Harvest was by ending the Harvest I was in. Uh, so it's a, it's a communications question. Um, yeah, I think, you know, certainly that was... I mean, overall, the game is a month and a week old now. Mm -hmm. um, and so while we did do some um, some alpha testing, and so some people uh, in the chat may have been uh, had the chance to be involved in that, it's still, you know, very fresh as a game. And, um, uh, and this was, of course, our first event. Um, and so getting a whole bunch of pieces in place, like the currency conversion and things like that for divine favor mm -hmm. and uh, you know the the initial uh, structure for spending that and getting buffs for that so yeah lots of moving pieces and even as you probably saw throughout the event we were um, changing some of the messaging pieces because there were some issues about uh, just knowing how to like how do I know if I've got enough to currency to do the next thing in the event, um, next quest in the event when I don't necessarily see the currency piece? So, so yeah, mm -hmm. so you can expect a bunch of changes around that. So, uh, oh yeah. good, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I remember I, I had a, a har high harvest tide run, running high harvest tide. Oh, and um, I can't remember how much of the uh, the harvest baskets I had spent up. I don't think it was enough for a chest, but there wasn't an option for me to spend it on a chest after the event ending so I, I know that that was a bit of feedback that came through at least once on uh on social media as well um so so this person's question is like right now you cannot clearly see bruner's damage number which you can't that's totally true um are you guys going to fiddle around with the position and display text so the ui 
Yeah, yeah. There's actually been a fair amount of discussion around that, and um, we did some brief tests in the alpha test around like having a mode where you uh, removed all the bottom pieces, um, so like the the circles underneath and how they're filling up and the damage piece. So you kind of mm -hmm. see, especially if you're kind of letting it idle in the background, you could just sort of like see them just kind of doing their thing and doing their attacks and stuff like that. Yeah, because um, like, yeah, even, even if you mouse over him, it's like. Mm. No, yeah, it's well, there. I mean, but at that point, when you're mousing over, if you do that again, then it's really, it's the... After the, a second, they all well, fade away. Well, it's the away. text that appears on the right-hand side, right? So, you know, you've got the game text over there, right? The damage and everything. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the DPS number is useful at a point, but also knowing, like, what each of the attacks is doing is useful, so... Uh, so here's another question about the game. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the point of giving Tyrell a specialization that gives plus all damage if alone in a corner, but also adjacent to unit healing? It seems counterproductive. So uh, specializing in Moonbeam instead of uh, being a bear. So what, like? Yeah, no, no, no. I understand the question. Okay. No, because <laughs> I've also thought. So I'm like, yeah. Justin, why did you do it? Just, just, Justin in chat, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to throw Justin to the wolves like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah, yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't have a good. It's a very good question, though. Good question. Yeah. I don't have a good no great answer. No satisfying answer for that one yet. No. Um, so I mean, I think as a design philosophy in general, Justin is trying to do is to force you to make choices. Like a big part, a big part of the differentiation for idle champions relative to some of the other idle games is, I think, player agency and getting to make choices and, you know, really in a set of choices trying to figure out what is the most optimal of this set of choices and then doing sets of builds and experimenting and going oh that build didn't work as well and so mm -hmm. I'm gonna reset and kind of fiddle around again oh well, that's fair um, yeah yeah you know as compared to uh you know i played a lot of um you know clicker heroes or venture capitalists and you know in those ones the the choice spectrum is much more narrow mm -hmm. in terms of what you're doing. You don't have the formation piece, your upgrades and stuff. And, so, and for the most part, like Clicker Heroes, it was like, I dump as much money as I can into my, you know, the last uh, hero that I'm up upgrading. Yeah. Because they're always going to have the biggest impact on my DPS. Okay. Um, so what do we have next? Uh, how common will it be oh, for... Oh, someone win the raffle? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Someone run there. Wow, look at this. Just all this yeah, yeah. Well, party. They probably won it five minutes ago, actually. We're still yes. working our way through the questions. Oh, okay. Um, there we go. So how common will it be for new heroes to have hero-specific loot boxes, like with the Harvest Festival? Um, once again, that's sort of a design thing we're working through. Um, I anticipate that certainly for events, uh, you will see, uh, see that kind of structure. And then... Um, uh, in terms of the base set of champions, uh, we have some plans, but nothing to announce yet. Ah, oh, duplicates. Cool. Um, so what about, uh, there's another one that brings up a question that's a little more true to playing D&D &D at home with your friends, is like, will quests ever have moral choices built in? Example, you know, rescue the elven princess for gems versus sacrifice her for dark damage. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, do you save or sacrifice the princess? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, at this point, we don't have that in there. I think one of the the cool things about D and D is the opportunity to explore that stuff. Though we don't have anything to announce on that yet. Okay. Um, uh, another question is sort of similar, I think, in that um, they're asking us if we're planning to implement a feature for the players to create their own champions or heroes and party. Um, it's not something that we're planning at this yeah. point. Like, so um, I think a way that we've approached the game was to really envision, unlike in the tabletop RPG where the first thing you do is roll up a character, yeah. um, where obviously it's not a faithful recreation of 5e rules or anything like that, it's about taking the Forgotten Realms settings and characters and getting yeah. to kind of experience those characters and play with those characters. Um, so yeah, so it's you know you get to it's it's somewhere between kind of like maybe a video game and like the books and stuff like that where mm -hmm. you read about Bruno and Dritzt and all those characters. Yeah, so. or, yeah. or or watching the shows like because one of the cool things that honestly hadn't been something when we were initially thinking about this before we were chatting with wizards um, is sort of like oh this could be a cool idea the notion of the streaming community and interacting with the streaming community and mm -hmm. so. Like, you know, that, as it's currently manifested, has been having the uh, five Force Grey characters from Season oh, yes. 2 yeah. all in the game. And then you have kind of 
you have this chance to sort of see the character here and interact and then be like, oh, I want to learn more about, uh, you know, Arcan or whatever. Yeah. And then you can kind of go watch, you know, Joe Manganiello playing Arcan going, oh, this is like, this dude's character is like here. Okay, I can kind of see this thing. So I think that notion of surfacing um, the Forgotten Realms world Mm -hmm. um, in these kind of bite-sized ambient awareness sort of pieces that people can kind of see given that there are so many years of history there and be like oh who's this person i would like to learn about this person it's like oh that well that one comes from neverwinter when Mm -hmm. the the mmo came out oh okay well let me go check that out or oh that one you know i'd like to see more about minsk and boo oh well there's you know this series of comics that came out recently with minsk and boo like oh i'll go check that out and so kind of touching across a whole bunch of those pieces and then going out to all of those expressions of D D was something for myself as a player i thought would be a really cool experience when i was envisioning what i would want out of the game yeah and well i mean even just I mean, we have Ashara in game here, and Ashara mm-hmm. is also in Tales from Candlekeep. Uh, that was cool, actually. Yeah, 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 I chose her to to play because I was like, "Oh, wait a minute, I know." Is it, and as, as a wizard or druid, depending on which book you're reading, <laughs> um, but uh, is a wizard in Idol Champions? Well, and in, and uh, and Tales from Candlekeep, uh, wizard too. So. Oh, really? And you know, and in. Um, te- uh, the Tomb of Annihilation book mentions the Tomb on of one Annihilation page. Book does not say that she's a, a druid. No, no, it does. It, no, it doesn't. What well, kind of? No, it doesn't. It uh, doesn't specifically say her. It doesn't name her class. What it does on page sixty nine, because <laughs> I looked it up because someone had mentioned it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened there? Um, and so it does use um, druid type spells and stuff, but um, is not called out as a class specifically. So uh, oh, there okay. we go. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. wizard that knows druid stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, and we were working with that character before either this book existed or even we had um, insight into this like that hadn't been shared with us so um, yeah there we go <laughs> it was it, it was wizards it was like oh here's characters you can work with and we we're like oh yeah. okay this one would be cool so, uh, yeah. somebody's asking if we will ever be able to level up stats like strength or charisma so the, the base character stats um, we don't have anything to announce about that maybe so fair um, so uh this qu- next question, like currently, Bruner stops gaining upgrades at level nine hundred. Is there a plan to add more upgrades for those higher champion levels? Uh, yes, I noticed that as well. Actually, I, my my wife is a big games player, and uh, uh, we spent a lot of this weekend playing a combination of World of Warcraft and uh, and Idle Champions, and moving back and forth between the two. Mm-hmm. And she was like, "Ah, I need more upgrades." So I always tell her, I'm like, open a ticket, Mitra, and uh, yeah. <laughs> tell yeah. David Justin. Uh, so yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, people who played Crusaders Lost Idols, there was, depending on the um, Crusaders, six or seven upgrades, and then they ended. So for this one, the design was one that we could kind of in- infinitely extend out in a way that Crusaders, because it actually took UI space, uh, we didn't do. So um, oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, somebody was telling me to stop being such a snob and use a different hotkeys to level, which apparently I haven't learned yet. Um, but uh, thanks for thanks for your feedback. I will learn that by next stream. <laughs> um, so, uh, what is the reasoning behind? Oh, oh the chat wow. window is moving so fast it yeah. kicked us out of that one. All right. Um, I'll scroll down and find another question. Done raffle. Yeah. Are we starting another raffle? Uh, it was half past, so yeah, oh. it's about now. There we go. Or maybe um, Erica's already done it. Oh, probably. Difficult for us seeing. Yeah. So, yeah, there's one running there. Um, So, question. Ravenloft, no good deed goes unpunished. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Agreed. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have anything else to add to that. Um, (laughs) I guess Tomb of Annihilation also falls somewhat into the no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. uh, uh, Daka Lin is asking if gnomes will ever be added to Ashara's bonds at some point. So I think they're looking for a way of buffing Stokey. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, potentially. Yeah. But uh, I, I got a really good know. answer from Justin when I asked. Oh, about okay. That. I'm like, there how come go. I can't buff gnomes? And he's like, you have to make a choice. Yeah, well, see, <laughs> that, that, that was it. Choice. <laughs> that Justin. So, I know. Yeah. I know. I yeah. Know. Which is fair. I mean, choice. It's not fair. Justin? Well, I think it's fair you, in the sense that um, okay, you can't make everything possible um, in the game necessarily. Yes. Uh, l- not like well, real D&D. But at the same time, uh, you know, 
there's that part where you know like my stokey is obnoxiously well geared um versus other characters so if i could make stokey the main damage dealer towards the end of the content that would be awesome but it's it's not really set up for me to do that well that's one of the things that i think is both really interesting in kind of game design but you know like in you get it quite uh, viscerally when you're DMing a game of D&D is like the engagement of your players, right? Like when you're when you're DMing a game, you can watch the Justice players. Justice for gnomes. Gnomes' lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so when you're DMing a game and you've got people around the table, you know, you want it, like the players will be like, oh, just give me godly powers, da da da. And it's like, well, <laughs> if I did that, that would be boring. I'm not saying that'd be no fun because, gone, right? Yeah. Every time you have somebody who wants to be a god in a game, it just, like, the gameplay degrades and it becomes yes. about Unless that it's player. black and white, you know, that was the. Oh, yeah, the you know, game where you game literally play a god. You play a god, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Populous was the other one I brought right. up. Yeah. Um, which but, dates me a little bit, I think. But Most that of whole, our audience probably doesn't know what Populous is. I think that whole idea of you want. You want it to be challenging, but not too challenging, and so it's like always kind of providing the right amount of challenge, the right amount of choice, and forcing a bunch of choices around things. So mm-hmm. um, and that's something actually that I have to say I really love about Idle Champions is there's both a lot of choice, um, but you can kind of there's a certain elegance to that choice in the way that you you can be like, oh, I'm just going to try these things, try these things that sort of allow a kind of a a freedom that's different than something where you're, it's very punishing if you make the wrong choice, Mm. you know? So there's a bunch of different choices, but it's not like, you know, oh, you made the wrong choice and you just, you know, permadeath that character and done. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, you can always also in in game, you can always restart. Yeah. You just, and you restart, you 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 don't have to finish an objective or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, uh, paying attention to some of the, the forums and uh, unofficial Discord formations, people are finding ways to maximize how much gems they can get in a period of time. So they're mm-hmm. resetting the game quickly and just tearing through it in a much more efficient way than I currently am. That's uh, actually something I love watching is like you know looking into the you know on the wiki and then the Discord channels and seeing like what players are coming up with as strategies and you know we we kind of create this world and then players come and inhabit this world and yeah. see what players do when they're inhabiting And then, and then they world. tell us what's wrong with the world. Well, and, yes, <laughs> and how to yes. make the world better. How it yeah. I, I know I, I like, I love all of it. I love the feedback on both ends of the spectrum because it speaks to the passion of the people who are playing the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If they didn't care, they wouldn't play or say anything. So, yeah. um, so oh thank you, honestly. Uh, that's, that's great. Yes. Um, we got another question here. Um, is there any plan to add more new slot characters as opposed to swapping heroes? So, um, so like maybe past Arcan or in between, you know, mm-hmm. two characters yeah, instead of yeah, having yeah. to. Yeah. You know. uh, yes. Nothing that we've announced, um, though that may happen in the future. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess speaking to the future of Idle Champions, like, uh, you know, maybe we could share with the audience what a potential, not necessarily the definitive written in stone, but what a potential long-term future for Idle Champions looks like in terms of. What are we going for? How many, you know, mm-hmm. where do we want to take this? Well, um, like, so one of the things that's really kind of foundational to our studio, and if you look at our site and you see the games that we run, uh, you'll see it sort of across across our games, is that um, when a game is in an active live service operational state, like Idle Champions, Crusaders, and we've got a game called Bushwhacker 2, mm-hmm. it's also in that state currently, um, we really try to engage with the community we try to be having uh, regular new content that's going out new events and the content I guess takes several forms you've got time limited content like events you've mm-hmm. got permanent content like the the new adventures that came out or yeah. you know like we've talked about doing two move annihilation in the future um, so you've got those pieces um, and then you've also got you know new feature sets and stuff that comes out and so it's you know sometimes it's a big thing that comes out sometimes it's a small thing that comes out but you know all, a regular pipeline of things coming out um, and if you look at the game that we've been live servicing the longest of the ones we're currently live servicing we've been live servicing Bushwhacker 2 for five and a half years now wow really yeah yeah and so there's <laughs> like five and a half years of content in there uh, for, for those players um, and you know certainly the vision here is to, to have a game that can last for years and years and years um, yeah. I think actually that's one of the things that for live service type games has really surprised the industry um, from like people didn't think 
you know, like World of Warcraft celebrating its 10th anniversary. 14. Well, yeah, no, no, but like when it celebrated its 10th yeah. anniversary, which is now actually like, you know, four years ago. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, no, people were like, oh, you know, a video game won't last that long. But, you know, if you give it that love and attention, you've got a player base that's really committed to it and you continue to support it, then I think they can last far longer than anyone ever imagined initially. Like you go back a decade or so. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, that's very much our model. Yeah. Okay. We got a few other questions here. Okay. Um, uh, so one question is, uh, what are your favorite classes to play as in actual Dungeons and Dragons, and why is it a surly dwarven fighter? <laughs> um, my favorite classes to play. I guess my favorite classes to play are the DM class because <laughs> I mean, so I, I, I've said this um, before, but. Uh, like when I first played Dungeons and Dragons, like a lot of people, I played it as a player. Mm -hmm. um, I um, I was in this acting camp. I was 12 years old. Some older kids were like, "Hey, there's this thing D and D. Let's play it." Uh, we rolled up characters. We played like once, mm -hmm. and and I was like, "Oh my god, this is the best thing ever. I must DM." And it it never even occurred to 12 year old Eric or even Eric for the many many years later that there was this other thing of being a player. And so I pretty much always have DM'd because I've always really, really loved DMing. And mm. so I have, I have actually, of all of the decades I've played tabletop RPGs, you know, D&D &D and others, um, I could probably count on maybe beyond one hand, maybe two hands, the number of times I've been a player. Not campaigns, but like just actual oh, wow. times. Okay. Yeah. Very few times, almost always DMing. Huh. You see, I, I only DM'd a tiny bit, and I realized that the enjoyment for me comes out of being a player and losing myself in the experience more than having a, a direct control of that experience. Well, for um, me, what I love about being a DM is you you, you create kind of this structure. It's, it's, it's a lot like making games. You create a structure, and then players come into that structure and then they do these really cool things that surprise you and go mm -hmm. like, oh, I hadn't thought of using the structure in that way. Yeah. And, and particularly in a tabletop setting where you can really dynamically move back and forth, you're not creating new art assets and pushing out code and all these kind of things. Yeah. Um, you can really respond to that in a fun kind of improv theater, which I always loved improv as well. Yeah. You can respond to it in a really fun way. So. Mm -hmm. um, we do have one person asking us about uh, what the process is or was to cooperate with wizards on the game. Um, I'm not sure how much of that we can actually speak to, but yeah, uh, I mean certainly to some of it. Um, so I guess it's uh, not a was and is. I guess we, uh, you know, we've been working with wizards for a while now, um, and uh, I mean I was very upfront when we were uh, initially chatting, saying that we'd never worked on a licensed game before. All of mm -hmm. our other games have been our own IP, um, but I just. You know, knowing Dungeons and Dragons really felt it was a really great fit, and what we could do here, I was really excited about that. First and foremost, because I, as a player, wanted to play it. <laughs> it was like, I love D and D, and I think this would be really fun, and I would love to interact with that very broad world that is D and D yeah. through this, and then t all these other touch points. So I, I personally was very excited about that idea, and then, um, but but like I said, we've never worked with an IP before, and there's a whole bunch of kind of uh, you know, different circumstances in working with an IP. Um, and the great thing about Wizards is obviously they're used to working with people around IP, and so mm -hmm. they've been really great, really in helping us kind of get up that curve and helping us kind of take our ideas and sort of put them through the Forgotten Realms lens, if you will. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we, not only were we very actively working with them through the development process of the game, but um, because it's a game that's not done, it's it really <laughs> yeah. never done. Early right? access like, on Steam. Uh, well, not just early access, but like even after early access, it's still never done. Like if we're mm -hmm. issuing, if we're putting out new content every week or so, we're putting out new features, like it's never done. So we're always adding new things. And so as a result of that, we oh. have a, an ongoing and continuing Sorry, I haven't seen these enemies before. There you go. <laughs> I know some of the art's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. Great work, um, but uh, yeah. So uh, we continue to work with Wizards, and uh, and they've been great. I mean, it's obviously a much larger company than we are. We're eighteen people, and they're not. They're and, more and they're owned by Hasbro, and yeah. so uh, you know, there's. You know they're working within their systems, and we're working within our systems. Yeah. But, uh, but they've been really great and really supportive of the game, which has been awesome. So. It's it's always wonderful to have that collaboration with people who are also passionate about it. 
you know. Well, like, what's been so cool yeah. is you know being a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons and then and really enjoying Five E and really you know I, I played a lot of versions of D and D uh, and and I, I I really admire what they've done uh, from design perspective with Five E and getting to see the people who did that that I look up to and having them go like oh I'm playing your game <laughs> it's yeah. like oh my god it's so cool <laughs> yeah it's a really awesome experience yeah yeah gotta make it gotta make it good for them um so let's see uh are we going to oh and i oh. actually I, I say one thing that was interesting to me about first interacting with wizards when i kind of got to go from sort of a fanboy status yeah to actually like talking to people who are like involved in D and i mean it's not a huge team within wizards that's involved with D, but pretty much across the board there's such deep love of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. That that's the most important part too. Even, I think. even when like you know, at first we don't know if this is gonna work and we're gonna have, you know, able to put this together or not. And even when that was a question mark about whether we would have a, a corporate relationship and working with on this game, um, being able like I kind of like as a fanboy was like, Oh, I'm so glad that you guys are the stewards of this thing that I love. Like mm-hmm. I felt this like internal relief of like, wow, you're just so into this that's so awesome because I, I'm so into this and I want it to be loved by the people who are the stewards of it. You know, yeah. and, it's, and it's just it's just kind of across the board in that group. Yeah, um, it looks like uh, Erica is doing or has done the uh, more raffles. the raffle for the Tales from Candledeep. Yes, I guess uh, I guess the the, the lesson here is if you're interested in the raffles, don't listen to us watch the chat because we have <laughs> no idea when they're happening. Yeah, yeah, we're aiming for quarter past, half past, quarter two. But, but, it, uh, but yeah, well, especially because you know you're looking, we want to look at questions and stuff like that, yeah. which means we don't see the bottom of the chat. This Anyways. would be way easier when we. Adjust our setup to have a producer who can pull out moderate questions and just feed them to or us. Or we have more monitors. Well, that would also be wonderful. Dave, more monitors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, much Anyways. love for Dave, though. He, there we he go. put so much work into this. It's oh, he did. Astounding. Yes, yes. we love um, you, Dave, with more yeah. monitors. Yeah. So let's see. I think the raffle is still going. There we go. Um, Maybe. The uh, yeah, and it was it was actually really wonderful. Oh, someone um, is listening. Look at yeah. That. They don't uh, have this on mute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it was wonderful to talk to the, the, the some of the staff from BCom. That's a question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you guys planning to implement a feature? Oh, God, it's moving <laughs> so quickly. And there it goes. Bye. Uh, for the players to create their own champions. Uh, not at this time. Yeah. Uh, I think I we answer? covered that already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they might I have joined the stream yeah, late. Fair or, enough. Fair enough. Yes. Or they might have been trying yeah. to do a raffle and just not quite. That's true. That's true. Us. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, the focus is on like Forgotten Realms characters and. This is a good question, and I think it's going to come up more and more frequently over the coming months. They're still accepting entries, um, Dylan. Oh, they're still accepting entries at least yep, seven are, seconds ago. Yeah. Um, someone asking, if they have missed Stokey, will there be a future chance to get them? Yes. Um, the answer is yes. Officially, yes. Yes. Um, so does that mean that uh, High Harvest Tide is going to become an annual event, or will there be another way? Uh, um, we tend, I mean, so we we do tend to have events that continue, like run each year, and so I mean, if you play any of our other games, you would see that. So it would not be a surprise to see that happen again, though. Obviously, we haven't officially stated that, but that would not be a surprise. Um, and then uh, there may be other vehicles to do that as well, potentially. Um, so you don't have to necessarily wait a year, but those things may not come into uh, effect for a while. So once again, it's a only a little over a month out. <laughs> so a lot of pieces, and we're still getting in. Yeah. So well, that, that, I think that's great, though. That um, you know, we're a month out from the launch on Steam, or the early access on Steam, and uh, you know, we've had content come out every single week. And uh, I think yeah, yeah. Have we missed a week? I think we pretty much did had we miss one? stuff. I no, I'm just trying to think. I don't think I we don't did. Think so. Yeah, no, it's been. I suppose we could have. Somebody will definitely tell us uh, if we did. It's been. Uh, uh, not it's that we'll been, see it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So yes, no, it's been it's been a lot of work. All those backgrounds, and I mean, one thing that people may not know is um, everything that you see in the game, with the exception of the I guess you don't see it, the music that you hear and the sound effects. Uh, the music and sound effects we outsource and work with some folks on that stuff um, that yeah. don't work here. But everything else, all of the tech, all of the one of the things that's really awesome to see is all the art. Mm-hmm. Um, everything of that is done here, done in house, animated, all those pieces. Yeah. Um, and, you know, running our servers and all that kind of stuff. So all like these caterpillars, all that. And I like, and I love. We have, so we have six full time artists, um, and I love kind of seeing the stuff. You know, you get because they have a, the centiques that they're working on, the screens that they're doing the yeah. art on. 
and probably good that the office it. is set up the way that it is because if I could see people working on art, I'd be watching that and not doing anything else. <laughs> well, that's why we put you in a dark room. Yeah, no, yeah, darkened corner, corner with the close with the with the green walls so that they can make it appear right. like I'm anywhere else. Um, somebody asking a question okay. that I was expecting at some point. Ah, um, uh, yes. You know, asking about the conversion method for converting event favor to normal divine favor. So, um, is there anything that we can talk? talk about in regards to that? Um, well, nothing specific. Um, I mean, it's the first event and we're kind of, I mean, something that certainly was a design change bef between Crusaders and Idol Champions was how we would handle reset currency. So in this mm -hmm. instance, uh, Divine Favor. And um, it was something we talked a lot about during the design process and for a bunch of very good reasons, felt really strong about making changes to the way that we did that. Yeah. And I think also making changes to what the way that they're that reset currencies often think thought about in other idol games as genres. Um, and uh, and so obviously the first example of that was the event and you know I'm not saying we did everything perfectly through that uh, but uh, you know we're we're trying and learning and we will iterate and do more events going forward and uh -huh. uh, and try to do the best recognizing that we want we don't just give everything we want challenge you got to keep people in that sort of like not too easy not too hard state right <laughs> and so you know it's got to be a struggle no. yeah well yeah you, you don't want to just be like you know like oh here's all your you know Awesome, everything, blah, blah, Like now. when you start the first mission of the new one and the zombies actually kill Bruner first thing cause if you're not paying attention because there's too many to start. <laughs> ah, so, <laughs> so Justin was over my shoulder as I was doing that and he's like, oh, da, 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 have you spent any of your, uh, your divine favor to upgrade yourself, which I had only spent a tiny bit. And he's like, oh, and I'm like, this is so hard. But thankfully, a raven flew by and is able to kill the raven and that gave me enough gold to like get <laughs> going because <laughs> I had to wait to kill the first zombie I'd have been toasted. So uh, we have somebody asking, uh, in the proud tradition of Greyhawkism, will codename uh, employees be getting their own characters? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, potentially. It's certainly not. Uh, I mean, at this point, it's... Um, you know, it's really around creating things that forget, uh, fit within the Forgotten Realm setting and have kind of all these other pieces within that, like in terms of other, like, like I was mentioning the comic books or the books or the web series, yeah. like the Force Grey stuff. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I think one of the challenges with creating a, you know, like Eric Jordan character, you know, Dylan Wolf's character would be people are like, oh, like, who is this dude? Yeah, because <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. like the whole idea is to touch on <laughs> like that. Like there are like forty plus years of Forgotten Realms lore and canon to kind of draw yeah. on. So, so we got a bunch of other questions and some okay. related to that. Um, one like one person minutes. is asking if we intend to if we run events annually, will we change up the content within the event? Yes. Uh, yeah. So there is definitely. I mean, we tend to. I mean, so. We'll see because we've only run one event in a game that's only a month and a bit old. Mm -hmm. um, what we tend to do based on our other games would be to take the event and make some modifications. So recognizing what we have, uh, sort of generally we have two kinds of people playing an event. You've got someone who's played it before and someone who hasn't. Yeah. And so you want that event to be fun for both of those groups of people. Yeah. Um, and so you've got kind of the, you know, the event that ran, if you will, the previous year and you've got some people who that's whole new to and they're excited about that and then you've got some people who um, have played it already and so you want to add some new things, new twists and yeah. stuff to make it exciting for them. Okay. So. That's fair. Um, and plus, you know, you okay. wouldn't want them to just blow through the content board so, no, especially if the artist works so hard to make all that content. Um, <laughs> I like this question. Uh, related to that, will there be a Gary Gygax tribute character? Not mm. Dave Arneson, but Gary Gygax? <laughs> uh, well, he was yeah. on Futurama. There we go. Yeah. Yes, yes. When the, when the universe ended, they were they're like, who wants to play D&D? &D? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there's certainly no stated plans to make a Gary Gygax uh, tribute character at this point. Um, what about, are there any plans to add a legendary gear tier, so higher than the uh, epic or purple gear tier? Uh, nothing I can talk about. Oh, that doesn't sound like a no. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> like we've got lots of plans. Now, plans by plans, I mean, they vary from very detailed documents to, like, uh, you know, bullet point on a napkin. It seems yeah. like you know, there's a yeah. whole range of, of things, <laughs> right? So, um, I mean, that's one of the cool things about making a game like this is because we actively live service it, we can be very reactive to the community and really work 
it's it, you know I kind of think about it almost like it's this dance between us and the people who are playing the game and like trying to create something that's really interesting and exciting within the, the very real constraints that we have to operate in as yeah. sort of a only 18 person studio yeah uh, we have somebody asking if uh, if Stokey's items will ever drop from regular silver or gold chests um at, certainly not at this point so certainly not at this point no. uh, somebody else asking if there will ever be some kind of multiplayer experience uh, that's not something that we've certain not something we've got really any plans for and, and similar to even like leaderboards or PvP stuff and things like that like those mm -hmm. aren't things that it's, it's really not designed around kind of that so okay. I mean like it, it's interesting because I think games are fundamentally social experiences um, and it doesn't matter whether it's a multiplayer game so you're playing Rocket League with your friends or you're playing a single player game and talking about it with your friends. This is like mm -hmm. one of the reasons that we got the chat um, in the game and stuff like that is because you know recognizing that you know it may be a single player game but you want to talk to people about it and you're yeah. like hey what about this and have you Community done this? Community is, is, is an important aspect of most games now. Yeah absolutely. Well I think it always has been. Mm -hmm. Like I think the idea that there were single player games that you kind of played alone in the dark I think I did a TEDx talk on this topic. <laughs> and I think it's like fundamentally flawed. Sorry, Dylan and I joke because that's how Dylan and I met. He was one of the organizers of that particular TEDx yeah. Victoria. Back um, in the day. Back in the day, yeah. yeah so, um, Let's see. Add a customizable player character. Hmm. Uh, what else we got? If you do run the events annually, will you change up the content? Yes, uh, we, we will yeah. answer that or we intend to. Um, well, no stated thing, but you can expect that's probably Somebody asking likely. me if my current formation is optimal at my gold find level. Um, probably not. Probably um, not, yeah. Because I haven't really been paying a huge amount of attention. It's been. If, if only there was a way for the I've players. I've been idling while it plays itself. There's only a way for the players to like, change the formation mm. while you're like talking. Maybe I should level these characters up more. How about that? Maybe she won't die quite so quickly next time. Um, let's see. Um, there are people farming 30 golden chests a day. So, yes, scripts and auto clickers matter. Oh, somebody was asking what mm. our official stance is, if any, on scripts and auto clickers. Mm, we don't have an official stance on them. So, I mean, Perfect. If, people, if people wish, I mean, there are people who use them. So, like, yeah. people use them. You don't have 30 to. golden it's chests a day. I don't think I've opened 30 golden chests. I mean, like, but one of the things, once again, is like, there is no leaderboards in this game. There's no <laughs> PvP in this game. Like, yeah. you know, and so there's no, there's no, like, we very intentionally kind of designed it so there's no, it's a single player game. There isn't competition with other players. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about enjoying that experience, right? And so if you enjoy that experience doing a bunch of scripting and, uh, you know, auto players, oh, yeah, a little more power to like, you. Yeah. Okay, you know that's not yeah, that's know. not this isn't this isn't aimbotting to kill Twitch streamers live on their stream. You right, know, right, you know, and you're not yeah you know, referencing not, a lawsuit not, today from I forget which game it was, but uh, yeah. news. And it's not a game like you know um, Overwatch or something like that where like oh my god someone's hacking on my side and then killing you or whatever yeah. like and suddenly the game is unfair right like that's yeah. not the game that we. It's playing. just mutually unfair for everybody really. Which is the best uh, way well, to go. It's just, you know, <laughs> if you... Yeah, oh, there you <laughs> I'm joking. Game design? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, this will be Dylan's last stream. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Justin's going to kill me when I step I out know, that door. I know, I um, yeah. know. So we have somebody asking, uh, saying that they, they love the music that we have now, but it would be oh. nice to have a few more tracks. Uh, you know, so the, I, I'm going to ask the... Maybe the chat, because it's got... 500 people in it um, may not be the best way to kind of ask this, but um, it is a um, we assume that most people play with the game sound muted <laughs> because you tend to play with it do. in the background, like yeah. I do. Um, and so, listening our, to Spotify, the games right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, or you're, you're, you're watching Force Gray or something like that. Like, yeah. there's, you, you know, you tend to, you know, that kind of. I guess the visual space of the game can kind of sit in the background, whereas if it had audio space, if you will, that it was taking up, that becomes difficult for players because they're listening to something else. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we kind of debate. We, I mean, on one level, we'd love to do more music, but on the other level, if everyone just has it muted anyways, so yeah, you know, that's uh, becomes a, a difficult piece of that. <laughs> uh, so, 
Question. Please give some tips to new players. I have finished all the easy and medium level, uh, and now hmm. all the leftover missions are deadly, no. and I'm stuck with hard levels. Please help. Yes. Uh, so uh, a key thing to remember oh, is that you don't need to do one of the specific um, uh, adventures. What you can do is you can do the free play. And so... You know, for myself, I go and I'll do the free play um, on my account to sort of get up. And uh, certainly for the beginning, uh, I think a, a good rule of thumb for most idle games, ours and, and others, would be when you can reset and double the amount of um, reset currency, divine favor in our instance, uh, when you can... Muted. It's lots of people saying that they play with the Oh, yeah, muted, muted, muted. Yeah, see, there we go. Yeah, so, yeah. yes, so... Um, so we can spend more money on content you'll see, or we can spend money on muted sound you won't listen to. Um, uh -huh. So, sorry, so yeah, so when you can reset <laughs> and double the amount of divine favor you have, that's a good idea, and I would just always generally do that. Or if you can, if progress is just slowing down and you're like, oh, it's just really, it's taking really long, or it's just getting kind of boring, I want to reset and go back. So, yes. Cool. There we go. Uh -huh. I got the five minutes. This guy's, this one Answer person, questions one person said, muted because I love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, fair. that's right. Yes. On that note, like, music off sounds on. There we go. Yeah. Because oh, the sounds of gold. Yeah, yeah. Cha ching. It sounds, it's, yeah. Um, let's see. Sound, sound, sound. We're all still talking about sound. Sound. There we go. Looking for other questions. Music. Uh, that's quite nice. I'm glad you like the music. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's good enough to listen on to on repeat f at, at, for long yeah. stretches, so like, like we're doing now. <laughs> I will I will be, be dreaming of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, shoot. yeah, yeah. I Watch out that. for that mic, Eric. Come on. Uh, Those okay, are expensive. Question, question right there. No. Oh, have you ever thought of releasing a real money purchase only hero? Hmm. Uh, have we thought of it? I mean, yes, we've thought of it. Uh, we certainly don't have any plans for it. Um, something that we did with Crusaders that worked uh, pretty well was. Uh, essentially, all of the heroes and crusaders are ones that you can earn, um, basically all for free, mm -hmm. um, and then but you know gearing them up and stuff like that's where monetization kicks in. Yeah. Um, it, we did do one working with Loading Ready Run. <laughs> Nemesis system. About um, uh, we did Loading Ready Run has oh, a, uh, a Desert Bus. Desert for Hope. Bus. Yeah, mm -hmm. Desert Bus for Hope, where they're raising money for child's Charity. play. Yeah. Um, and so we did one there, uh, sort of working with them, where you just basically, depending on how much money you spent, you got uh, one of the people uh, gram from Loading Ready Run geared at different levels. Um, but we, but all that money went directly to charity. Like you know, it wasn't a paid wasn't event. for, for profit, wasn't for, for us for name, profit. It was just, it just was, for charity. Yeah. So that was the only yeah. time that we've done that. And, okay. Uh, and Loading Ready I like Run. That. I like that better than coming up again. So than, you know, that may happen again. As, as soon as you put in a, a character that's in the normal game that is good that you have to pay money for, then it starts to become a bit of a different thing. Like a charity thing is, yeah, yeah. Is awesome. I mean, it's, at least it's, then you're supporting a cause. Don't type question with a hashtag. Long well, ago, um, <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, it's a, certainly a balance to provide an experience that's fun for people who don't spend money. Yeah. Well, is fun if you do wish to spend money and being able to provide the same game that can do both of those things. And I think yeah. that's something that the studio's gotten yeah. good at. Yeah, um, we have a, just a little over a minute and a bit left. I know. Um, so I guess suppose the last question we should take okay. is, uh, when is the next content update planned? Uh, well, it's already planned. Yeah. Uh, yes. But, uh, but what, el what else can you say? Content. What were you reading earlier? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't reading anything earlier. I yeah. think this goes into a uh, uh, VOD, so you can see what I was reading earlier. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you answered that one much quicker than you normally do. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> is, is the next new champion uh, going to be a turtle, and will it come out with Tomb of Annihilation? Hey, that's an interesting Go. and very specific um, question. For those of you in chat who haven't seen this, and I don't know, Erica, maybe you can throw the link into chat. Um, we do have some upgrade, uh, like unlock bonuses that come as part of the extra life for um, that Wizards of the Coast is running, the D and D team within Wizards of the Coast. Oh, amazing! Um, okay. And so that might uh, relate to some of the stuff that you're asking about there. Oh, cool! Huh? I'm just gonna get that stuff queued up. Um, what else do we have in here? Do we have anything else that we can do quickly before we? 
fade out. Actually, we know. We, I think we are out of time. Yeah, I think we're about oh, yeah. done. Okay, well. Look at that. To our 561 <laughs> folks. Hello, everyone. Well, thank you so much for taking your time this uh, afternoon you, to, to join me on the stream. Uh, it would be much more boring if it was just me talking to myself and playing the game and getting just all that, that But you're not really by salt. yourself. Look, you've got like <laughs> over 500 people. Oh, it's just would it be all the salt about how bad I am at it because there are lots of players who are much more, much, you know, put hundreds of hours more into uh, uh, being being efficient. Um, so, so are these going to be a regular thing then, Dylan? Yeah, every every Thursday, Thursday at one p.m. PM Pacific, Pacific time, talking can, idle champions. That's and right. Talking about whatever the latest content is that may or may not come around out <laughs> around that <laughs> there time. There will always be content coming out. I think we'd safely say that. <laughs> so, oh look, uh, people seem to enjoy it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this over to the uh, news view and. Do a bit of an outro quickly here because we only have a few seconds. Um, but mostly, I just want to say, uh, tune in next week at the at one o'clock Pacific, and uh, I want to give an extra huge thank you shout out to Dave Whitaker for building the studio from scratch uh, inside a week from quite literally nothing, which is super impressive. And also to Wizards of the Coast, uh, without whom none of us would be here right now doing this. So uh, uh, thanks a lot. Um, stick around because uh, Tales from Candlekeep. Tomb of Annihilation uh, is next at is 2 o'clock p.m., uh, followed by Destiny and Doom at 3. So there we go. thanks for watching, everyone. Bye! <laughs>